I'm here with Stephen, who's the Merkiston and Mark Eatonbrook Project Officer. So first of all, would you be able to tell us a little bit about the project that you work on, Stephen? Yes, uh, the MMB project works with farmers and landowners in the catchment of the Merkiston, Cutler, Mark Eaton and Mackworth Brooks and their tributaries. And we try and promote wildlife friendly land management that will also bring benefits for soil conservation, water quality, landscape and flood alleviation. It's quite a large partnership between local farmers, the National Trust, the Kettleton Estate, Seven Trent Water, the Environment Agency, Friends of Mark Eaton Brook and Derby City Council amongst others. Would you be able to tell us a little bit about the history of the lakes at Kedleston? Well Kedleston Park and Hall were created in the 1700s and designed by Robert Adam and it took a gang of men 11 years to create these lakes and to think that at that time they had to do it all by hand. It was originally canalised uh, but this system of lakes forms an integral part of the design landscape at Kedleston and is a very important ecological habitat. It's essential for both for the proper functioning within the overall design and for maintenance of their ecological value that the lakes function appropriately. And to do this, they must contain optimum volumes of water of good quality within the correct boundaries. And it's really important these cascades should function properly and that the levels of silt within them must not be excessive. So what's the wildlife importance of the lakes? There's quite a lot of different types of wildlife within the lakes themselves. We've had otter recorded quite regularly since 1980. The otters are likely to continue to use all of the water bodies for commuting up and fishing. The open water of the lakes with its associated swamp and marginal habitat supports significant bird interest. They also provide quite an important foraging habitat for bats, uh, for example Dorventons which forage over the water and the associated man-made structures such as the fishing pavilion provide potential roost sites. The linear character of the lakes means they're also likely to function as a commuting route for bats. Are there any particular threats or problems that the lakes of Kedleston face? Yes, there are quite a few. One particular problem we have is siltation. And uh, the MMB project, as I, as I mentioned before, is working with landowners upstream to try and improve the siltation problem. Land use practices mean that the silt's coming downstream and it's settling at various lakes within the park, which reduces the, the water level itself. We also have a problem with uh, eutrophication, which is the algal blooms that happen on the lake. And we have invasive species, including Himalayan balsam, Japanese knotweed, mink. So what does your project do to manage the lakes? Well, we work with landowners further upstream to try and reduce these siltation problems. We're also looking into the possibility of dredging the lakes, which was done on numerous occasions over the last 100 years or so. It's a very expensive job and it's quite complicated, uh, involves a lot of consents. But basically we're trying to remove some of the silt to improve the habitat and to improve the levels of water. We carry out quite a lot of monitoring within the lakes themselves. We do digital mapping with GPS. We also have a nominated volunteer, our lakes volunteer, who carries out specific tests on the water within the lakes, including the turbidity, which is the cloudiness of the water, the actual depths of water and pH values. The Environment Agency also carry out biological and chemical assessments of the lakes at quite regular intervals. So what were the lakes originally created for? The lakes were all created as, as part of the important design of the landscape. As you walk around the lakes themselves, particularly if you come down from Kettleston Hall, the first thing that you'll see is the Island Lake, which is the most prominent and probably the most significant, uh, with the fishing pavilion, the Adam Bridge and the island in the middle. Upstream of Island Lake is the Wilderness Lake, which is slightly different. It has a uh, different edging and just upstream of Wilderness Lake is the Silt Trap Lake, which is an important function of catching the silt before it comes further downstream. You can probably have a look at some of the different management practices as you walk around the different lakes, specifically the Island Lake, where you can see we've been carrying out some clearance work to improve the habitat. Uh, there is in fact a little pond on there as well. We're hoping to plant some additional species over the next few years, including oak, beech, ash and willow. At the moment, we're really just trying to clear some of the scrub, the bramble, the nettle, the wild raspberry, and particularly the bracken. And then we'll replant with the trees as shown on the original plan back from 1764.